Hey guys, and welcome to the Hive Mind StarCraft 2 Summer Finals. And wow, I'm leaving my music going. I am sorry about that. But for those of you who don't know, my name is Evolution Gaming's Woodhouse, and I get the pleasure of bringing you the Platinum and Gold Final Match. Now, if you haven't looked at the bracket, I would suggest going and doing so so you know how both of these players got here. But, for those of you who don't know, we have Jay Lelly, who is actually making a triumphant return from the last tournament back into the finals of this summer event. And then his opponent, who signed up this time and wasn't part of the last one, but we were glad to have him here, we have Scora. So, like I said... Whoops, sorry about that. Hit the wrong button, but just a little bit of background. Uh, the Hive Mind has put on a couple of these tournaments now. This is the culmination of the gold and platinum bracket of the summer tournament. And right now, everything is looking good. I'm, I'm hoping for a great series here. We're looking at a best of seven starting on MLG's Metropolis. Now, not to be confused with Metalopolis. This is Metropolis. And actually, just to give you a, an idea of what it looks like, we'll go ahead and just pull it up here on the screen. This is the description of MLG's Metropolis, as you can see it's version 1.2, and you can see the layout of the map. Now one thing to notice, there are no expansions in either corner like there used to be. So that's just something to keep in mind uh, throughout this series is when we get going here. Uh, and right now we're actually waiting for Scora, just needs a couple of seconds. Make sure the players are ready. And one thing I would also like to say is we'd like to throw a big shout out to NVIDIA who is sponsoring our Fall LAN. Big thank you to them. We are looking forward to having, having you guys and thank you again for sponsoring. We have one okay from Jay Lelly. Now we're just waiting for Scora to come back. Was that Scora? All right, and here we go. With the good luck, good luck, good luck. And as we bring you right into the game screen, you can see the countdown has begun. Again, my name is Evolution Gaming's Woodhouse, and I'm bringing you the grand finals of the Hive Mind StarCraft II summer event for the gold and platinum. See where everybody spawns in this map. This is actually a really big map, and I love it for a lot of reasons, mainly because it can lead into some very, very macro-oriented games. So we do see everybody loading in right now. Come on, you can do it. Come on, computer. Come on, bud. Waiting for everything. And there we go. So spawning down here in the bottom center location, we do have our blue Protoss player. As I mentioned before, first time comer to the Hive Mind tournaments, we have Scora. His opponent returning to the Grand Finals. From the last Hive Mind tournament, we have our red Protoss player, Jay Lelly. So, like I said, both of these players doing a fantastic job to get here. I believe Jay Lelly came out of the loser's bracket, I think. I'm pretty sure. And Scora just kind of dominated his way through the entire time. So we're going to have to see how that plays out. We see the first scout coming out now for Scora. Still no pylon. First pylon actually just going down right as I say that. So more than likely we're going to see some sort of Forge Fast expand, which is becoming more and more prevalent in this matchup particularly because it gives you that early nexus and gives you the opportunity to not only uh, cannon at your natural but also cannon up here at your opponent's natural to try and delay that expansion even more for Zerg because the farther behind the Zerg player is the better it is for the Protoss player. So we do see the first scout now coming out and kind of the queuing up there. Jay Lelly, are you going to expand? Nope, he's going to scout. Unless he has something specific in mind. Scourge continuing to build them probes. We do see the spawning pool just now going down for Jay Lelly at 14 food. Right now supply is dead even at 14 of 14 or 14 of 18 for both players. And we do notice that there was no harassment there for Scora. We do see the probe on or the drone on the probe though to try and stop that harass. Did temporarily pull another one off. We're going to have to see if Scora does actually go for the blocking here. And nope, but he is going to go for a little mineral line harassment. Oh, he does get away. He does manage, if you can see there, oh, and he does. He puts the pylon down, delaying Zerg's expansion. But Zerg doing a 
fantastic job of doing the same thing to Scora down here, blocking that early nexus. And we don't even see a forge out right now. And look at the minerals. So actually, oh my god. That is a very strange timing we're seeing come out of Scora. He feels comfortable enough that his opponent doesn't have anything out on the field to go ahead and go nexus first into a forge instead of the other way around. And we do actually see... Oh, blocking the third. Scora, you dirty dog, you. Blocking the third for J. Lely. And then proceeding to cancel right after it. And then going gateway. So actually Scora feeling really confident right now about the position he's in. And I don't blame him at all. He's actually managed to block the third for quite a while. Block the natural for a really long time. We do see the third for J. Lely is going down right now, though. So that didn't uh, that didn't last for very long. And with that uh, pylon going down in the natural, we did actually see him get supply block there and throwing the photon cannon down after the fact. Getting the first assimilators now is Scora. J. Lely with two hatcheries incoming and actually right now only four five lings out on the board. The cannon is finished and the gateway is just about to finish. And we do see the nexus down at the natural is now finished for Scora. Cannon taking the first shot, taking out one Zergling, not taking out another. Score a little bit skeptical, might have had to block that off. I believe you can get that with a pylon, but he does decide to just choke it off with a cybernetic score. Now one thing I would like to point out though is, oh, up until that, never mind, my point's irrelevant. We do see Jay Lely now getting both of these expansions up and running. The third uh, hatchery is just about done. So right now both of these players playing this matchup out pretty standard, but if I had to give an edge to anybody, I would definitely have to say Scora. Managing to block those hatcheries for as long as he did, that definitely throws a kink into the plans of Jay Lely, and we're going to have to see how he recovers from it. Cybernetics Core with Warp Gate Research is now on the way for Scora as well. Continuing to chrono boost out those probes. Only on two geysers at this point, though, so he doesn't really need that much. First Zealot now coming out now, which I, I actually find this timing a little bit interesting because if you've been paying attention down here to the timer, we're just now at the six minute mark and he brought out his first Zealot. So actually up until this point, he's been a combination of vulnerable and in a fantastic position, I would say. We do see more drones incoming now. Is JLLE going ret on us, I'm assuming, and just droning hard? But he does have full map control at this point. If you look at the placement of these Zerglings, he actually has full control over the middle of the map, with the exception of this down here. But any player who is going that far out of the way is definitely hiding something. We do have Warp Gate research about two-thirds of the way done now for our Protoss player, Scora. And Scora actually only tacking down one more gateway at this point. So he's on two gates and getting a quick level one upgrade. The Zergling is pretty paranoid about there being any sort of proxy pylons, anything like that going down. And we do see a Roach Warren coming out now for Jay Lely as he does go ahead and take the gas down here at his natural. So right now using that third Nexus primarily as, or third hatchery, excuse me, primarily as just more larva, which is not always a bad thing. We do see the queen starting to pick away at that destructible debris. Zergling is going to chase down this probe. He's going to try and going to try and uh, outmaneuver him, but I don't think that's going to happen. Still no Zergling speed on the way, and six broaches in production now for Jay Lely. So Scora at this point actually tacking down three more gateways and a robo. So going two gate robo off of the FFE, pretty standard stuff, and a robotics support base. So actually we're going to see some pretty quick Colossi come out of Scora right now. I actually like this play a lot because there's not really a whole lot your opponent can do about it, especially if he's just now getting up to Roach Tech and saturating that third. That actually does put Scora, despite the supply deficit, that puts him a little ways ahead. Double Evo Chambers, Evo Chambers coming out now for Jay Lely as well. And a couple spines getting thrown down to complement that. Looking at the current APM, look at these two players go. They are going at it. And we do see the proxy pile on four score getting placed up here near the third of Jay Lely. 
Right now, supply is in Jay Lily's favor. Like I said, though, it's going to be interesting to see how this actually plays out because Scora is actually on some very quick Colossi tech and tacking down three more gateways. So I'm going to say this is some sort of two base timing push, more than likely. Maybe even an all in. We might see it that way. We do see Colossi range coming out now and a double robo. It's going into double robo production off of the two bases. This is definitely some sort of timing attack. Gonna have to see exactly how long that is and a Twilight Council. It's gonna be interesting to see if he's getting that just for the upgrades or if he's going to actually use it for something else. We see more roaches coming out from Jay Lully right now. Both of these players just kind of content to stand back and let the other one go. Uh, we do see the Observer Force score coming out now. So actually just kind of waiting to see what the other one does first. Scora has regained uh, map control. He needs to kind of move that stalker over a little bit, but ultimately he has regained the control of this map. And the one Zergling coming out now still, oh, and there's Zergling speed finally finishing. The Zergling got the full scout off of what was standing right there, but I don't know that that's what it, oh, and he doesn't, he doesn't get the scout on the third, but the probe for Scora is headed down that way to do that right now. More roaches continuing to be pumped by Jay Lily at this point. And if we look at the supply, it's about a 20 food difference now between these two players. But that double robo tech coming out of score is probably going to make up the difference between the two. We do see the another immortal and a warp prism on the way. These three gateways need to get changed over. And yeah, at this point. Oh, do we have it? We have we have an eight century push. Stalker's getting the first blink off. Needs to pull those back before they get any damage on them. He does. We do see double upgrades also started for Jay Lelly now. He's going to be slightly behind, getting 1-1 one, one about the same time, though. So right now, both these players are on even upgrades. And Jay Lelly, oh, in the force fields, the clutch force field, trapping some of those roaches. He's going to get a few free roach kills as they are still stuck on move command. The rest of those roaches coming up to the front. More roaches coming out now, trying to take the high ground advantage. And Scora backing up just ever so slightly. We do see one warp prism out on the board now and two Colossi in production, as well as 12 more Roaches for Jay Lely, and a Macro Hatch going down now for Jay Lely. So, just, ooh, and losing a couple of Roaches. Scora being very aggressive with these units right now, putting a lot of pressure on his opponent, forcing him to make military units as opposed to droning up as though, I don't think Jay Lely actually needed to worry about that much, but, oh, and trapping the Infestors, loses one Infestor. Throwing down some beach balls. We're having a little dance party with the beach balls here. Elevator plate by Scora. This is so amazing. But he's going to get the surround. Jay Lely getting the surround with those units. Scora out of force fields now has managed to pick this army apart. And force fields are just laying down nowhere to go for any of this army. We do see a warp in coming up here. And we do see the bro. Oh, and Scora continuing to pressure Jay Lely at this point, and oh my god, ladies and gentlemen, this has been absolutely amazing. We do see both of these players. We do see the supply now dropping for Jay Lely as he's pumping some emergency links, and ladies and gentlemen, the Colossi are out on the board, so we are going to see more than likely a GG coming out of Jay Lely here soon. This is the point where Zerg starts to get a little nervous because everything is right up in their base, and there's not a whole lot he can do about it. The units that he had got taken away, and the Colossi come in now. And another warp in of units up on the high ground. So Scora is now pushing into the main. And the GG comes out from Jay Lely. So with that, Scora taking game number one. Good luck, good luck to both players in this second game of the series. Hopefully the graphics look a little better for you guys. If they don't, I will restart the game in between the next match. So here we are going into MLG Daybreak, the map choice of Jay Lely, and this tends to be a favorite for most Zergs, uh, just with the ability to expand fairly early. And we do see spawning down here on the bottom side, we have our blue Protoss player taking the first game. We have Scora. And his opponent spawning up here in the top side of MLG GSL's Daybreak. We have his opponent down 0-1 in this series, Jay Lely. So like I said, interesting timings out of Scora in the last game. I may actually end up stealing those for myself. It'll be interesting to see if he decides to go with that same play again, 
or just you know go something completely off the ball but we do see the first pylon go down for Scora right now so more than likely we're going to see the same build over and it'll be like I said there's a lot of you'll, you'll hear me say it a lot there's a lot of interesting things that came out of that last game specifically I was intrigued by the fact of going Nexus first um, that takes a lot of control to do on Scora's part meaning that you know he had to block the expansions for so long and he did it flawlessly and that allowed him to go next first and that put him way ahead for the rest of the game like you saw the supply was vastly in J. Lily's favor but then once Scora started that train just kept on moving and he really couldn't do that much about it Scora going to go ahead and just continue to scout out J. Lily here we do see a 14 pool come out of J. Lily and actually Scora changing it up going forge first so we will see the standard FFE play. Now the only other interesting thing that can come out of this is does he decide to go Cannon first or go Gateway first? Or even Nexus at this point. You can get away with doing just about anything off of that. Again, depending upon how much pressure you put on the Zerg. We do see Jay Lily getting the scout off. He is deciding he's going to patrol between the two points to make sure that he sees when that probe comes down. The forge is now finished. And Scora with the block again. J. Lelly going to make a mad breakdown here, trying to get the third, and he does get the third down before it can get harassed. So actually, it's going to be interesting to see the uh, play change out of Scora here, if he's going to go cannon first or not. And like I said, that's based upon how much pressure you're able to put on your opponent first right off the bat. And we do see another probe coming down now. Looking like he... What's he going to do? Uh-oh. Scora... Both of these players supply blocked at 18. I'd just like to point that out. And we have a little worker-on-worker worker action going on down here right now. Oh, and Scora with the ninja expand out of it. Jay Lully just a little too much on his micro there, making sure that drone didn't die, but allowing Scora to drop down the Nexus first. And this is what I mean. You see no cannon here. You see everything being played out the way that uh, Scora feels at this point. And that's apparently very safe because there's still no cannon going down. The natural is down now for Jay Lely, and the third just about done. We have Lings out on the board now to patrol the main force. Uh, Jay Lely just about saturated. We still see no gas. So this is a very uh, standard play coming out of Jay Lely right now to go three base, no gas coming out of that whatsoever. Very, very Rhett-esque in style. Uh, it allows him to just drone like a madman and get a booming economy off of three bases and then maybe go into some roach production so actually right now everything looking pretty standard on both sides of the map the only thing that is a little bit different here is we do see a second gateway going down now for scora and no cyber core did i miss that somewhere no so we actually do just see three gateways coming out now for scora and a cyber core so he's actually just going to go three gate off of this ffe and no cannons, so actually he's still pretty confident about his position at this point. The third is now up for Jay Lily, as is the natural. Jay Lily is supply blocked just a little bit, has an overlord on the way, two of them to be in fact. So he will be out of that shortly. This Zergling is just going to continue to pat around here to make sure that there are no forward pylons. Double gas now in the main of Scora, still has not taken the gas down at his natural. It'll be interesting to see if he follows this up the similar uh, play as he did last time, just doing a small timing push off of two bases. We do see a Twilight Council in production now for Scora as well, and Warp Gate Research just now starting. So right now, like I said, Jay Lely just continuing to drone up, double gassing in his main, so he is going to go for something very, very tech heavy soon. Double gassing in his natural as well. So yeah, we're going to see something very tech heavy come out of Jay Lely very, very quickly. That's one benefit that Zerg has, is that they can replenish those drones fairly quickly and get enough drones into gas to make it worth their while at this point in the game. Score, on the other hand, just preferring to produce sentries at this point, not that bad of an idea. Just in case he gets a mass of roaches, he can wall off right there. And we do see level 1 weapons on the way for Scora as well. A little bit of lag there, I apologize for that. And Jay Lely going to go ahead and actually take all six of these gas geysers. So he's got something up his sleeve. Uh-oh. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Where is that? Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, say it with me. When behind. 
Because that's the weird part. We're at the seven minute mark. And nothing is nothing to this point has truly happened. We've seen some excellent harassment. But maybe that's what this is for. Maybe this is just gonna be continued harassment, which I would love to see. We do see warp gate just about getting done now, a fourth gateway going down now, four score as well. We do also see lair. Ling Speed and a Roach Horn on the way for Scora at this point, making that nice wall off at the front that Zergs like to do. It gives them that little bit of extra protection right away in the game. A couple of spines going down now at the third as well to protect that. Um, what else interesting is going on? We have double upgrades coming in now. So are we going to just see a bunch of roaches? That might be it. Oh, and the Overlord getting tickled to death. That must be some intense tickling. Because that's two, that's two centuries worth of tickling. Some intense tickling. And the, oh, the Dark Shrine is now done. So we're going to have to see how he decides to go about this. He has no warp gate at this point. Or uh, no warp prism at this point. Excuse me. We do see the Guile Reconstitution. What is that? Is that? That's Roach Speed. Okay, so Roach Speed's on the way. I can never remember that name for some reason. Jay Lily, I like the positioning of this Zergling. Just to make sure that when a third does go up, he knows exactly where it is. You see another warp in of units, and the DTs are on the field, ladies and gentlemen. This is this could be really bad, actually. This has potential to be insanely bad. If you look at the units right now out on the board, we have 49 drones, 5 lings, and 4 roaches out for J. Lely. This could be a pretty significant issue if not caught. Uh, I mean, let's let's take a look at Jay Lally's vision right now. He has some roaches out on the board, and he sees that finish, but does he see... I don't think he sees... No, he does not. He doesn't know that's there. He does have an Overseer in production, though, so he's going to know very soon. But that third hatchery is going to fall. And it's... And there we go. The Overseer does pop. The DTs, though, did what they needed to do in that case, and that was to get rid of that hatchery for Jay Lely. That was a huge loss in a lot of ways, and we do see more roaches just continuing to flood out. Now, Scora, re in full retreat mode at this point, going to lose... No, he's not going to lose his Zealot, or... Oh, come on, there we go, he does lose his entry. So Scora in full retreat now, and Jay Lely on the offensive... Did not bring the Overseer with him, though. It is on the way now, so he's probably going to lose a couple of roaches. We have six more DTs. I would almost call these Desperation DTs at this point. Uh, it's one of those things where you're like, oh my god, I hope he doesn't have detection. Oh god, I hope he doesn't have detection. And by this point, you're just like, holy shit, I hope he doesn't have detection. And yes, we can thank Day9 for that reference, but still, it holds very true here. Because at this point, you're actually hoping your opponent does not have any detection whatsoever. Jay Lely taking out those DTs. Going to force the cancel. Is he going to... Oh, he does not score up. Losing his third Nexus to that Roach push of Jay Lely. At this point, the supply is 137 to 73 in the favor of Jay Lely. So right now, it's going to be kind of a, a game of who gets there first and who has the bigger aggression. Uh, the DTs were kind of a clever play, but it's not going to work out for him. Oh, and he does get a couple of clutch force fields off, oh, but can he kill the DTs? Those are the major damage dealers at this point. The rest of this army looking a little weak, but I think it's going to be enough to... Oh, and, he's, oh, and he doesn't take out the sentry. That was a lucky pickup for Scora. We do see more roaches just continuing to stream in right now. 125 to 65, the supply, and uh-oh. We do see a proxy pylon, but it is in sight of the Overlord. It's going to be inter how is what's he going to warp in? Is he going to warp in anything? We do actually more DTs on the way now. Going to do the damage that they do. So scorer right now is literally just hoping there is no detection for his opponent. This is like the ultimate desperation. Oh my God! I hope there is no detection. Warping in four zealots down here at that proxy pile. I'm going to run those in to try and distract Jay Lely just a little bit. 134 to 75 the supply right now. We do have another Robo on the way as well as an Immortal. And level 2 weapons on the way as well. So we do see these four zealots going to run their way up here. Probably going to get picked off here shortly. Moving the Overseer. Oh, and targeting down the Roach Warren. Interesting choice on Scora's part. I'm not sure how well that's going to work. He might get it, though. He's work He's doing the damage. And not going to be quite enough. 
the zealots getting taken down right at the front the army now is just kind of hanging out here we did see a transfuse go down on one of the roaches and now if you're Scora, what do you do do you keep harassing with this or do you kind of taper into some other tech we have seen him slightly switch into robotech but it'll be interesting to see if he decides to keep up with this dt play and aspire on the way now for jay lelly we see dt's getting warped in and a well placed a very well placed spore crawler there to avoid any issue jay lelly actually handling this like a champion uh if you saw that just what happened there just having the spore crawler in the right place as well as enough spines to just take stuff down not really have to worry about it all that much the immortal Scora, get that immortal out of the way. Oh my god, it's crab walking its way. It's not quite fast enough or the roach is going to get us around. They might... Oh, but they're going to do some damage. They're definitely going to work over that immortal. These... They're trying to get the surround... Oh, and they do manage to pick it off. That's actually a fairly big loss. That immortal, a significant chunk of Scora's damage at this point that is no longer there. Although Scora does have a couple of proxy pylons and a DT still out on the board as well. J. Lelly at this point is picking up steam like a madman. This army is actually really scary. If we go ahead and look at the units tab, that's 44 roaches out on the board right now. To 10 stalkers, 3 immortals, and 1 DT. And that DT... That DT... Kill it! There we go, and the DT is down. The roach is picking off that extra pylon, and J. Lelly taking that forward expansion. It's kind of an aggressive expand from my my opinion because you know if your opponent breaks down these center rocks it might be game over although i don't think that's going to be an issue right now we do see the infestors all burrowed the roach is just sitting outside this third as a protoss player i can honestly say this is one of the scariest feelings you've ever had in your life where you know your opponent's just sitting outside your base waiting for stuff to happen we do see level three missile attacks for zerg on the way as well as 13 roaches and let the siege begin we do see the roaches pushing in Pushing in, and the Infestor is not doing so much. Everything is moving in now, trying to pick off this army of Scora. And, oh, and some clutch force fields. But the beach balls, look at that. Look at that concave caused by the beach balls. This might be a GG. Even with that extra round of warp ends from Scora, this is still a lot of units busting down the front door. This is like the cops coming in and kicking it down right in the face more infestors coming in more units continuing to trickle in for jay lelly he is still ahead 100 supply though and at this point i don't know that there's anything that can save him those infested beach balls are going to cause some damage and the roaches are just continuing to work things away he is going to be able to pick off that nexus if he so chooses but let the siege of the main begin those roaches just continuing to focus down everything J. Lelly doing a fantastic job of denying this third for Scora. It has been up for a little while, but I mean, look at what just happened. Scora is down 100 supply. We do see Corruptors on the way now, so this is the slow transition into Broodlords, killing off a few more of those probes. If we go ahead and work, open the Worker tab, it's 12 Workers killed to the two of his opponent. Infestor Roach into Corruptor Brood, I'm assuming. Let's call it. Let's call that right there. There's not that many units left for Scora. Scora is slowly but surely just kind of withering away. This is, like I said, a very, very scary moment to be a Protoss player, knowing that your opponent has everything out there, and knowing right now that you're sitting on 67 supply. Level 3 Protoss weapons are on the way now. We do see uh, one issue, though, Scora is having, and I'm still not completely sold on this, but the triple robotics facility... Um, you see people go double a lot of times, but triple, not so sure. And the fungal holding all of that in place, getting the surround. He is going to be able to take all of this down. And he does. He takes down the entire army of Scora. 185 to 61 now supply. And to be completely honest, I don't know that there's anything Scora can do at this point. There's one stalker up here that's just going to come harass. He can take that out with a few lings. There's some more stalkers here. But there's just so many roaches flooding across the board. He does blink away from that to save them for a few more seconds. But like I said, there's not that much he can do. Level 2 ground carapace and level 1 melee attacks actually on the way for Jay Lily right now. 
and a robotic support bay finally going down. It might be too little too late for Scora. I hate to say that, but if you look at the money in the bank and you look at the supply right now, it is too little too late in that sense, and there's not a whole lot he can do about it. It's, it's sad, actually. As a Protoss player, it makes you frown pretty hard. You see Scora trying to maybe fake his opponent out. Same goes for Jay Lely, maybe trying to make sure there's no hidden expansions. Scora leaving the door wide open, trying to re-expand to that third. I don't think he's going to do it. One thing I would like to note, though, is the creep spread for Jay Lely. Not quite as good as I've seen in the past. That's all right. Look at his position in the game. It's gotten him this far so far. Right now we're seeing 12 Stalkers out on the field for Jay Lely, and the Broodlords are coming in. So this is... This game has essentially reached its pinnacle. And the Broodlord's morphing right out in the middle. Oh, gets a fungal on some of those Stalkers, and the Broodlords have morphed. This is the slow push that is going to end the game and win it for Jay Lely. I, you know, I just don't know what really to say at this point. That's, that's about it. You see the slow siege beginning. He's got enough roaches on the ground. He's got the Broodlords in the air to cover him. And this is going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. And level three weapons does not finish. He's going to take down these gateways to begin with. He's going to handle that army that's down there at the side. There's not a whole lot about it. And Scora calling the GG. So, ladies and gentlemen, we just saw it. Jay Lely coming back and tying the series up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game number three between Jay Lely and Scora. If you've been keeping up with us so far, you'll know what the series type the series. Uh, count is and actually it's tied right now one to one scorer taking game one jay lily taking game number two and scorer's map pick is mlg's esv cloud kingdom now this map again another fairly good map for zergs the only complaint that i've heard about it is how exposed that third is but that's for everybody and i'm not not entirely convinced on that one so spawning up here on the top hand side the top hand side we have our blue Protoss player losing game number two, looking to get this back in his favor. We have Scora spawning down here on the bottom side. We have his opponent spawning as the orange Zerg. We have Jay Lely. So again, game number one, a very nice two base timing by Scora. Game number two, on the other hand, just a continued battery from Jay Lely. Very reminiscent of uh, the first tournament that we had for the Hive Mind where he just continued to push in with Broodlords, push in with everything like that. So it's going to be interesting to see how each player takes a stance on this game. We do see the first pylon for score going down now, so it is going to be another FFE or die try in moment. And when I say that, I actually do mean like FFE, Nexus first. We've basically seen it all at this point in terms of how that build can work. Um, we saw last game where Scora did not go cannon until probably the seven or eight minute mark after he had those DTs up. So it's gonna be kind of interesting to see how he decides to play this out. The drone and the probe do give the little handshake there. And we do have a pool going down for Jay Lely now. 14 pool coming out. It's going to be interesting to see. Do we see 14 hatch, or is it going to be something completely different? Right now, it's just kind of a wait and see moment. And Scora checking down there to make sure that there is no expansion. Jay Lely doing the same, just trying to cause some sort of delay in their opponent's play. And Oh, and the pylon does go down, but is the probe going to die? The probe is stuck. Oh, and the probe does go down. So he is going to be able to avoid harassment at that third, but he still does have this pesky pile on there. And Jay Lely, Jay Lely, you are my new hero. You are my new hero. I just want to throw that out there. So we see now, ladies and gentlemen, if Scora is going to throw down a pile on in, his, in Jay Lely's natural, Jay Lely's just going to go fucking steal his natural. Forge on the way now. Double gas. And a pylon coming out now. Going to be interested to see how Score decides that he is going to play this off. Uh, we do see another gateway coming in now. 
This is going to be very, very pesky for Scora if he decides to just let this finish. Now we do see a cannon on the way, so that cannon is going to be able to handle whatever comes out, unless it's roaches. Unless uh, Jay Lelly decides to go for the complexity cats view of this, or I guess it's root cats now, I'm sorry for the, uh, the miscue there, and just pump a bunch of roaches in your opponent's base. And we have Zerglings on the way. And the cannon is cancelled! He cancelled the one thing that could have possibly saved him here. And Jay Lally looking like, I don't know if you could see the clicks, but he is going to take full advantage of it. Another cannon going down now for score, but I think it's going to be too little too late. These Zerglings are going to just come across here and take it out. He is going to go ahead and take that down, but he does block with the cybernetic score, but it, again, it might be too little too late. You see those Zerglings work away on that cannon, and he's going to go ahead and just work away on that pylon. Up here in the main base, we do see another photon cannon going down now, but I again, I don't think this is going to help. Uh, the Zealot is going to pop out, but it's just going to get torn down by those links. We do see Zealots... Oh, and it does not finish! 37 of 38 seconds, and it is delayed! Artosis has entered the building, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, this is... Wow, this is an Artosis moment. Oh, dear lord. That's right, pulling probes now, pulling probes! Running away. He is going to take down the gateway in the main. More Zerglings continuing to stream across the map from Jay Lelly. Jay Lelly also taking his natural expansion now after deciding, you know what, you denied my expansion for long enough, I'm going to build a hatchery in your natural. So like I said, Jay Lelly, you have my nod, sir. That was amazing. We just see another forge on the way for Scora. One cannon is up in the main, but that is a lot of lings. That is a lot of Zerglings. If we look at the units tab, that's 39 Zerglings out on the board right now, two 24 probes and a cannon. And another forge. So JLL going to have to play this right so that he doesn't lose a bunch of units to the cannon, but deciding, oh, to go out and take that forge. That forge is out of position. We are going to see another photon cannon go back in the back, but it looks like it's going to get taken out by some Zerglings. And the cannon getting completely surrounded. Oh, not quite. Looks like the probes are going to come in and be the heroes of the day. Oh. Let's look at the... Scora leaves the game. So Jay Lelly going up in the series two games to one off of... Some would call a very cheesy play. Others would call it innovative. Ladies and gentlemen... Welcome back to the Grand Finals of the Platinum and Gold Division. My name is Evolution Gaming's Woodhouse, and right now Jay Lelly is up 2-1 to one over Scora. And definitely go check out the other three games if you haven't done so already. This is a best of seven, with this game taking place on MLG's Antigua Shipyard. So we will have forced cross spawns in this case. We do see spawning down here on the bottom right-hand side a blue Protoss player who's played like a boss up to this point, Scora. His opponent spawning up here with some very, very innovative play last game, spawning as the orange Zerg, Jay Lelly. So like I said, if you haven't gone and watched those games yet, definitely go do it. It, uh, it has been an exciting ride for anybody who is just watching this. I would suggest going and watching the entire tournament as a whole to see how both of these players got there, but it is definitely interesting to see how they've evolved and see where they're at right now. And we do see Scora again with the pylon first down here on the bottom of his ramp right next to that supply depot. Of course that supply depot there so that you can't cheese on this map, you can't cannon wall anybody in, you can't do anything like that. Just about forgot that. So it'll be interesting. It actually will be interesting for once. And I know I say it a lot during this cast, and I apologize for that. But it'll be interesting to see how Scorer recovers from that last game. Uh, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, it was interesting, to say the very least. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, definitely go watch games 1, 2, and 3 of this series. It is a best of 7. 
And just one quick note here before we get started with the majority of this game, and we do see a forge coming down first, we'd like to thank NVIDIA for sponsoring our Fall LAN, which takes place September sometime, September 8th, I think. Yeah, September 8th, sounds right. Somebody can correct me in the comments, but September 8th, uh, NVIDIA just got back to us today and they said they would sponsor it, so thank you to them. And with that, we're back to our grand final match. And we do see Scora again just queuing up the points. Uh, is he going to get at these? Oh, and he does drop down the pylon. So Scora, with some pretty innovative play all the time through this uh, entire match, deciding now to go cannon first. So not feeling so sure after that last game. And actually, interestingly enough, look up here, we do see Jay Lelly taking his third as his natural, as opposed to his natural as his natural. That sounds, sounds really weird, but you see with the pylon up there, that does make that kind of a challenge. So interestingly enough, he opts to go for the third. Nexus going down now for our friendly neighborhood Protoss player. The third for, not score, J. Lelly. Uh, sorry. Third for J. Lelly, just about done now. That pylon does go down in the natural, so J. Lelly going to be in a very good position to actually just take that natural and start droning up. As you can see here, we do see more pylons going down now and a gateway for Scora. So this is an interesting wall off. I actually know there is a little bit of room there. He didn't actually butt everything up together. Or wait, did he? No, he might have. I'm sorry if I'm incorrect about this. It's actually been a while since I've done this on this map, so I'm not entirely sure how that's supposed to look. We do see the natural going down now for Scora, and if allowed to stand, Jay Lelly is going to be way ahead on this play just because he does have that extra base up at this point as opposed to his opponent, who's just now getting his natural. So it'll be interesting to see how both players play off of this. Ling's coming in now, going to try and pick away at that pylon. That is one safe point that they can pick at, because obviously this cannon has it area covered. And it is butted right up next to it. I'm sorry, again, I, I haven't done this build on this map for quite some time. Done a lot of casting, not a whole lot of playing, unfortunately, as well as other work-related stuff. So we do see the first zealot coming out now for J. Lelly, or wow, J. Lelly's making zealots. That's impressive. For Scora coming out now, and Scora getting this natural expansion up and running. We do see the cybernetic score going down now for Scora as well. J. Lelly just continuing to drone up like a boss. The natural is now done. Queen vomits larva. And the cybernetics core is finished for Scora. And interestingly enough, taking both gas geysers down here at his natural, which to me indicates something very, very tech heavy. Uh, and I said it for J. Lelly as well. But actually with J. Lelly, what we saw was just a mass pumping of roaches once he took those four gas geysers. And then slowly but surely adding in upgrades and such afterwards. But what this usually indicates to me is that he is looking to go for uh, robo play, very very heavy robo play, probably pretty early in this match, and early is subjective, obviously. So that's going to be the question: is will we see some heavy robo play? We do see two gas geysers getting taken in the main of Jay Lelly, and an interesting wall off here for Jay Lelly, forcing either down this attack path or all the way around the back instead of walling off here at the front. These two zealots content to go chase this Ling down. We still don't see Ling speed coming out now for Jay Lelly, so this is very, very reminiscent of last game, actually, where he got Roaches out first and then Ling speed. So we do see a robotics facility now on the way for Scora. Still no Twilight Council to continue those upgrades after the fact, uh, but he is continuing to Chrono Boost out upgrades. So right now, actually, he is ahead in the upgrade race, but Jay Lelly is now on double Evo Chamber and more than likely will start those soon. We do see 16 drones in production for Jay Lelly now. And this is kind of what I said earlier about being Rhett-esque in style. This is something Rhett was very, very well known for. And that was to just pump a metric ton of drones and get to a very, very safe point and then move forward. And we do actually see a very bold play coming out of Scorer right now. We do see a third Nexus drop down. 
that right now I'm not entirely sure he can defend. He does have Warp Gate just now done, but he only has two gateways out. Yeah, just making sure. He does only have two gateways out. So that's going to be very, very tough to defend should, for some reason, Jay Lely just decide that he is going to run by a bunch of links into that third. Oh, but interestingly enough, three more gateways getting placed down on this Artosis pylon by Scora. Now, I would like to see him drop down another pylon up in this area just to make sure he does drop one down over here, but I'm not sure that it'll reach all that far. This is actually kind of an interesting play, and yet again, you know, I, I said it with game number one, something I might have to adopt for this map. Scora going for a very, very early third, and actually is going to keep him up with his opponent. Because right now, if the mantra still holds true, and people can correct me if I'm wrong, Zerg needs to be at least one base up on their opponent to be ahead. To be ahead, mind you. They can be on par, and the mass Q in action, Scora, Scora, what, what are you doing, pal? Transferring probes up there. We do see an Overseer getting morphed here in the back. We do see a bunch of units coming up to the front. And this is kind of what I was talking about. This is actually a pretty tense moment for Scora, because he's going to have to find out one way or the other whether his gamble pays off or not. And that's exactly what this is, ladies and gentlemen. This is an a major, major gamble. And he does take out the Overseer in the main base. Sorry, I was getting some tea for my throat so I didn't uh, didn't mouse over. But there was an Overseer that was killed right here that he got from his base. And we do see first Immortal out now. And like I said, this moment's still very, very tense for Scora. And Scora, our toes is singing it up back here. And we do see the Twilight Council now here, so he can continue to get those upgrades as he desires. And the Lings out on the field now. Are they going to come up here and break this down? They very well might. See, now this is starting to become more reminiscent of the score that we saw in game number one of this series, where he had a lot of sentries, had a lot of force fields, and had a lot of just units and just barreled down the front door. And that's what essentially won him the game in that case. And I'm wondering if he is going to go back to that this time, or if he's going to stay... Uh, fairly, fairly content, some would say. So with that, if, as we look at the minimap, we do see the forces of the Zerg player, Jay Lely, massing out in the middle of the map. And we do see the push from Scora coming in. Right now, Jay Lely does have a 17 food lead. He's going to lose that Zergling. Jaylily backing up to help his reinforced distance. We do see a spire on the way now. We do see Roach Speed as well as Pathogen Glands coming out now. Four, three Infestors that are on the way. Do we have any Infestors out now? No, we do not. We have 22 Roaches against five Stalkers, eight Sentries, two Immortals, and nine Zealots. But right now, actually, if you do look at the probe and drone count, it is exactly even. So it's actually going to be a fairly even fight These should these two decide to engage. But oh my god, look at Jay Lely expanding like a boss. And actually, we do see Scora mirroring almost exactly in the engagement up here. Scora trying to pick some stuff off. Some Oh, can he? Oh, he does. He manages to pick off a handful of urchins. That is a huge pick off for Scora. Again, those units stuck on move command. JLLE just retreating out of there. He is more than likely going to lose this hatchery in the middle of the map. And he does. He forget. Oh, he didn't cancel. So that's 300 minerals down the drain. Not like either one of these players needed at this point. The Warp Prism harass up here in the third. And we do see the rest of the army coming up here to try and start picking this off. And start, again, this very, very slow, deliberate push by Squora that we saw similar to game number one. Now, one thing that is different now, though, is both players are on four bases as opposed to... Uh, four and five, and that comes from this hatchery getting taken out with uh, no cancel. But one thing to also note that this is the MLG version, so these are normal mineral patches as opposed to the gold mineral patches that were in the latter version of this map, as well as some of the early versions of the tournament uh, version of this map. And we do see two Colossi and Colossi range on the way now. And we do have level two attacks and carapace on the way for our Zerg player, but we do have a lot of investors out on the field right now. So Scora is actually kind of in a not so great position until his Colossi come out. He's just kind of trying to bide his time and make sure that the center base is secure. 
we do see a small force of links going to run around the edge of that zone and come over here and more than likely, yes, he's going to run by. And does send some links to stay there. Oh, is he going to get the Colossi? The links? Oh, the poor Colossi. Micro. By the power of Micro. And he does not get it. That was a huge save for Scora at this point. With that Ling running by. Oh, but he's going to get a few probe kills as we look, pull up the worker tab now. It is 0-0 zero zero at this point. Two workers kill for Jay Lily. Four for Jay Lily. And a Colossus pick off. That is a huge loss for Scora at this point. But we do see Blink on the way as well as two Stargates. So probably transitioning into Mothership of some sort. I would hope to see that anyway. That would be my logical transition at this point. Would be a Mothership out of this. Now as we go back up here to J. Lely, we do see some zealots in the main doing some work actually. If we go ahead and look back at the workers lost or the workers kill tab, we are at seven for our Zerg buddy, and that comes on the wings of a Ling run by. And oh, we do see some corruptors out on the field now. Going to take out, going to take out the. Uh, Warp Prism, and we do see the units coming over here now to try and take this out, but he needs to be careful. He's gone. Or is. Scora, what? Scora not paying attention to his mini map. Microing that stuff back. That could have been terrible. He does manage to pick it up, blinks back, gets those units out, throwing the infested beach balls. Not going to allow this base to stand. He needs to focus down that Nexus. Oh, come on. Uh and the DPS is not going to be enough. Scora does manage to save that Nexus in the middle of the map. That was a huge save, and it could have been potentially a huge pickoff had he been able to pick off the rest of that army. But we do see the Roaches and Infestors of J. Lely coming back here to a safe position. Now, both of these players do know that each other's on four bases. And in J. Lely's mind right now, what would be sticking out to me is that I need to expand again. I need to take that, uh, that base, and I need to get up to Broodlord so I can start this push. We do see the Spire just about done now. Uh, and level 3 missile attacks on the way. Now we do see Void Rays coming out now for Scora and a Mothership is in production off of the main Nexus. So Scora right now is actually in a pretty good position keeping up on bases with his opponent. Now both players are just about mined out in their main so this is going to be a pretty big pick up. Oh no! The Infestor's out in front leading the charge. That is not good at all. Throwing out the infested Terrans, but at this point it does not matter. The Colossi standing on the side, wailing away now. He does pick off the Colossi, but this could be huge. And the if, or, uh, wow, and the Corruptors coming in, taking out those Void Rays. J. Lely has the answers at this point, and it is just it, it is not going well for Scora. Although Scora with some nice force fields there, and the flank over here on the side going to get forced back into his base by Jay Lely. So now we do actually see uh, six more roaches in production. And Jay Lely needs to back up, otherwise he's probably going to lose this push. Oh, don't overextend. And he does. He does decide to back up. We do see another wave of reinforcing roaches coming in. We do see level air up. Uh, level one air upgrades coming in as well as the mothership now scora is going to continue to push forward here it is going to be interesting to see okay now both players have decided to come back i was going to say it would be interesting to see if one of these players was just just decide to push at this point as opposed to uh backing up and we do see both players just content to back up scora re-expanding to that base and actually at some point here we did lose a hatchery up here on the top side we do see a greater spire just about done six infestors on the way as well and the mama ship should be out somewhere mama ship it is out so in the capital ship watch there's another plus one we had a couple of carriers in the first week of this tournament and Jay Lely at this point going to try and expand across from his opponent uh, to take that again. There's still a Zealot over here that is causing some issues. I don't think he notices yet. He knows that the hatchery is gone, but I don't think he notices. And actually at this point, uh, Scora is doing a fantastic job of keeping his opponent off of bases. And what do I mean by that? Obviously, taking out that hatchery in the middle of the base, taking out this hatchery, he's doing a fantastic job of telling his opponent, you know what? 
I'm going to let you have your three bases. That's fine, but I'm going to contain you outside of that with everything I got. We do see nine more gateways in production, as well as a Templar Archive. That Nexus on the fourth is just now finishing, so we will be able to re-expand there. And Skora coming over now to break down the destructible rocks, and the army of Jay Lovely is on the move. We still see no... Oh, and the Broodlords have popped. So right now, let the slow push begin as long as these players don't overextend. This actually is going to be kind of a crazy engagement. We do see the Infestors and the Broodlords going to try and get the flank. So Skora throwing down a couple of pylons up here in the main, but ultimately is just set up in the middle. He is sieged up right there. And we do see the Broodlords. Oh, and he does lose one Broodlord. And the blink forward right underneath the Broodlords, target firing those Broodlords down. A little bit like, and a vortex going down. This is huge. Let's look at the supply now. Watch the supply. We do see Jay Lelly going to run a bunch of units in, as is Skora, but look at the supply. Fairly even right now. Fairly even, fairly even. And the Zerg player dropped like a lead balloon as his army gets ripped to pieces 100 to 169 right now, and the supply just continuing to fall. Right now, Jay Lelly is in a horrible position, and he does GG out of it. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, that ties the series again at 2-2. Two to two. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the grand finals of the MSU Hive Mind Platinum and Gold Tournament. My name is Evolution Gaming Woodhouse, and I'm bringing you game number 5 between Jay Lelly and Scora. For those of you who have not kept up with the series, go check it out. It has been amazing. I love this play. I love both of these players' play. It's been awesome. Go check it out. And hopefully game number five continues to be amazing. We do see game number five is on TSL's Ohana LE. Spawning up here on the top side of the map, who just tied up the series two to two, we have our blue Protoss player, Skora. And his opponent spawning down here on the bottom side of ESV's Ohana, we have our orange Zerg buddy, J. Lelly. Now again, if you guys haven't seen games 1 through 4, stop what you're doing and go watch them. They've been amazing. I wouldn't suggest skipping any part of this series. It's been absolutely fantastic. It's nothing short of what you would expect in the grand finals of a summer tournament like this. And we do see a pylon going down now for Scora again. Opting to go Forge first just about every game this, this match. Um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, not only if he decides to continue down that path, but which route he decides to go down. So, looking at it again, Ohana, pretty easy to expand on as a whole. Uh, you see how your bases are pretty well clumped up. You have a pretty, uh, pretty open, defendable area to make sure that you can get to all of those bases. And we actually do see the probe from Scora not going up to scout but opting instead just to wait and see when his opponent scouts. Or when his opponent expands, excuse me. And we do see the forge going down first now for Skora. Probes continuing to be produced in both sides of the map. It's spawning pool now down. So it was a 14 pool for Jay Lelly. And we do see the probe being pesky back here, going to continue to hide from this overlord. And Jay Lelly again, seeing what's going on. Going to block that hatchery, or block the uh, natural, excuse me. And Skora waiting until the opportune moment to strike here. And opting to just throw down that pylon. Continuing to harass like a boss. Spawning pool just about done now. That probe going to continue to... Oh no, Jay Lally. Jay Lally. <laughs> The question's going to be, is he going to be able to actually pull this off this game? Uh, we do see the nice pylon triage here. Drones continuing to DPS down that hatchery. And it does look like both of these cannons are going to finish before this, uh, this gets through. So the cannons will be able to stop anything that happens, and it'll be interesting to see if J. Lelly actually gets the cancel, or if he opts otherwise. And 
and it does look like he's going to get the kill before the hatchery finishes. But the question is, is, is he going to is he going to cancel? And he does. He does get the cancel off, allowing that drone to run wild and free. And like I said, he did get the cancel on that hatchery, so it'll be interesting to see how he decides to follow this up. His own natural is a little bit late, although his opponent still has not expanded, uh, opting instead to get a second pylon and a second cannon down there at the natural. Cybernetics core going up in the main of J Lelly or the main of Scorer right now. Wow, apparently J Lelly is just some boss who can build units of opposing races. Third hatchery now coming down for J Lelly as well. So both of these players gonna play a very, very macro-oriented game like they have been the entire time. We see J Lelly gonna go ahead and break down these destructible rocks, opening up that shortened attack path, or shortened defense path, excuse me. In just a second, my dog is wanting something. So, ugh. okay, so we got the dog issue taken care of. It wouldn't be a homegrown cast if uh, you didn't have animal problems running on in the background. We still don't see a nexus though for Scora, so it's kind of going to be an interesting thing to see whether he decides to actually expand off of this or not. So we do see a robo coming in as well as the second gateway, third gateway, fourth gateway. So four gate robo off of one base. Not sure how I feel about that at this point. Although he might be pulling some tricksiness considering he still hasn't expanded. Although all three exp er, all three expansions, both expansions now for Jay Lelly are up. Wow, apparently picking up my dog in the middle of a cast. Um, causing some issues. Sorry. Sorry. So yeah, we still see no Nexus out of Scora. I'm not entirely sure whether he uh, did this on accident or whether it is purposeful. Oh no. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. More than likely what I'm gonna see, I'm gonna call this five gate all in. Five gate all in, we're calling it. We're calling it. Five gate all in coming out of Scora. J. Lelly just continuing to bust down those rocks right now. Not that much actually to worry about. There's no units out on the field. Um, I'm not entirely sure does he have... He does. He knows that his opponent still uh, hasn't expanded. And look at the money start to pile up now for Scora. So yeah, more than likely we are going to see some sort of 5 gate all in since he still has not expanded. Oh, but interesting. We get a nice... We get an immortal drop. Ladies and gentlemen, an immortal drop. And it does look like Score is going to go ahead and drop down that Nexus after the immortal drop. So, really late. I am glad he did, though, because an all-in is not fun, especially when you go 5-gate robo. And Ling's running across the map now. Going to go check stuff out, but they do miss the drop coming in. Lair on the way now for Jay Lelly, as well as Ling Speed. And that's all I'm seeing at this point. If Colossi production has started. And we do have Scora coming in now with the Immortal Drop with two sentries. And actually, interestingly enough, losing one sentry Picking up the other one. The Immortal getting a lot of kills, though. If we go ahead and look at the Workers Killed tab, at this point, seven Workers Killed in this drop. Eight. And look at that Micro, ladies and gentlemen. Micro Jackson. We have the Lings coming down here to pick up the rest of that drop. And we do have four Zealots coming in now. This harassment is actually quite crazy, I will say. Sorry, when in doubt, pick up the heavy units. I'm just, just consent. Oh, and going now for the spawning pool. This could be a huge loss. Oh, but he's gonna lose the immortal, the immortal. Oh no, he does lose the immortal. 
So as cool as this was, I'm... Oh, and we do get the push in the front, the Colossi. Oh, no, that stopped that right in its tracks, though. We do see some roaches on move command trying to get to the rally point, but can't do it. Taking a little bit of damage off of that Colossi, but very good placement by Scora, making sure to uh, limit the amount of damage done on that Colossi. Three roaches now coming up. They're not going to hardly make a dent in that Colossi, but this is a very, very sad position to be in as uh, your opponent has got you pretty well cornered. You have a Colossi in your base. And the Colossi is literally just eating everything. And at this point, there's not really that much Jay Lily can do about it. We do have Mutalisks on the way, though. So that'll, that'll put an end to it. As we do see the Colossi finally going down. And the rest of that push getting cleaned up by Lings that are streaming in at this point. You see Scora warping in a round of units back in his main. Scora. Scora. Not rallying your Nexus. You haven't been building probes. And apparently those Lings just continuing to do work. Or the Zealots, excuse me. And he does see the Mutalisks out on the board now. Just now starting a Twilight Council, so he will not have Blink anytime soon. But he does have a Colossi in his main and is tacking down more gateways without actually having a running expansion. We do see the Mutalists coming in now. I'm going to just continue to work away at these units. Surprisingly, though, there's not that much there to uh, to stop them. You know, he has some stalkers. He's continuing to warp in stalkers, but that ultimately is not going to be enough to stop him. He does have to pull out, though. As we do see both of these players finally getting their production back up and running. Jay Lely having some issues early on. That push was pretty big, actually. Uh forcing the rebuild of the spawning pool as well as uh, the rebuild on the war Roach Warren. So actually Jay Lely is still slightly behind as his opponent still has most of his tech structures intact. Jay Lely on the other hand is just going to be a boss with these uh, mutos I have a feeling. Although he's going to see that his opponent still doesn't have a saturated natural. Oh, going to lose one to a cannon, going to lose two to a cannon. But at this point, I don't think it matters. When you're trading that many probes, when you're trading 19 probes for a couple of mutas, yeah, that's not too bad. Jay Lily, though, looking like he was a little bit off on his macro, or his micro there, excuse me. Not, uh, not keeping everything up to date and actually losing a bunch of mutas in that attack. Right now, supply 67 to 56 in the favor. Oh my god, ladies and gentlemen, I am just missing stuff left and right now. I am sorry. Apparently my dog caused more of an issue than I thought it would. But we do see the small push from Scorer coming in now. And really, there's not that much Scorer can do about it. He lost a lot of mutas in that attack, trying to exchange. We do see 20 lings now on the way. And they are going to get the surround, but we... Oh, nice force fields, but the Mutas are going to come in here and do the damage they need to to take out the Colossi. They're going to stop this trade as it happens, but still, this puts Jay Lily in a very, very sad position. Or Scora, excuse me, in a very sad position. Wow, apparently I just can't talk. One of these players is in a bad position. I know that much. How about that? We have a bunch of Lings now coming up the field from Jay Lely. Still no speed on those Lings? Oh, they have wings. Okay. Yeah, they do. Ling speed is now up. Ah. Do we have a run-by? We have a run-by, ladies and gentlemen. Trying to take out that cyber core, getting the surround on those Zealots. The Stalker is going to come up here and add their damage to it. Going to be able to pick off this run-by. 
But right now, if you actually look at the supply, I don't think we've passed the 100 supply mark in the entirety of this game. Both, both of these players giving us some amazing matches. I am very impressed all the way around. Scora! Again! One behind. One behind, kids. One behind. Dark Shrine. So right now, actually, we... JLLA! <laughs> A little bit of the miscue. I think he thought the uh, original spawning pool got killed, but we do see a macro hatch going down in his main now and an infestation pit. So he's going up to hive tech, but I just don't know if it's going to be enough. And we do see Scora now pushing forward with this small force of stalkers. Jay Lelly having some issues. Muta's coming over here on the side. The stalker's going to go ahead and check out what's up front here. There's still no observer out. And actually, it looks like the Colossi production has just been halted. We do a blink on the way, though, for Scora, and these stalkers just going to back up. Right now, we're at 94. Oh, my God, ladies and gentlemen, we just hit 100 food for the first time in 19 minutes. I will not complain about that, though, because these have been some amazing games, and anybody who doesn't think so so far probably shouldn't be watching. Cancel on the Nexus. Ah, uh -huh. I saw the ring, ling run by, and opted not to, uh, not to expand. The worst part about this for Scora is that he's going to have to do something here soon. Um, he's not sitting on a whole lot of bank. His economy has been kind of in shambles for a lot of this game. We do see more mutas just continuing to fly around the map to pick out stuff that is just out there. Um, he still has not reached Muta Death Ball status, but at the same time, I'm not entirely sure he will. Oh, but this could be huge. That's a lot of Zealots, but that's still a lot of Lings. We do see the Mutas coming up, picking up one of the Pylons. Muta's just going to sit here for a couple of seconds. The Lings, though, coming over here, this is going to be not very good at all. Is he going to get the cancel on the Nexus yet again? He very well... Oh, he didn't! He didn't cancel that Nexus. That's 400 minerals out the window. Right now, Scora is in a pretty sour position. Even with that trap and some very nice force fields, this is a very, very bad position to be in. We see Jay Lelly going ahead and taking his fourth base here, and the rest of his Lings going to get cleaned up. But still, that's 400 minerals that Scora lost on that. And now he does drop the Nexus down again, but can he hold it down? That is becoming the question, is can Scora keep this up? Right now, the War of Attrition is going to Jay Lelly in that sense. Deciding to run those lings away, trying to blink forward to pick some of them off. We do see the Meteorisks over here on the left-hand side of the map. Two DTs on the way right now. And there they are. So one behind kids, Dark Shrine. Remember, it always works, right? And the Muta's going to come up here to find an empty main, but still going to go ahead and just start picking stuff off. I don't blame them. Because you know what? Why not? At this point, you know, you're not, you're not really hurting yourself by doing that. And we do see the Spine Wall starting up over here. We do see some Overseers out, so he did kill off the DTs. Like I said, right now, this is a horrible position for Score to be in. He has very little money. He has very little wiggle room. He has to know exactly what he wants to do in order to uh, even become potent again at this point. Uh, it still has not gotten that expansion up and running. He's actually long distance mining for it. The Nexus is just now finished. Storm is also just now starting. So he's kind of feeling the pressure at this point. We do see a bunch of Infestors out here. Now, if he can actually get those through, we do have two Archons out on the board as well. So actually, it might end up being uh, Scora transitioning into some sort of Zealot Archon build. Would be my That would be my natural choice at this point. Um, you don't really have gas to start building Stalkers, things like that. So you start sinking that into Templar, and you start sinking it into Archons. You can do, uh, actually at this point, I would say probably High Templar Archons would be the most efficient for his money. Zealot Charge is also on the way, so it does look like he is going to try and gear up something for that. 
and we do see these meters lists continuing to just pick off this probe line. Scora has not had a stable economy all game long, and this is just adding to that pressure, that pressure that's been mounting all series long. As if you haven't noticed the last couple games, they've been kind of intense. We do see one cannon back here that's more than likely no, not going to get picked off. These Mutalisks are moving to the back. They are going to try and pick off the Dark Shrine. Maybe. Maybe, just maybe. Yes, he is. He's going to be able to pick off the Dark Shrine. So no more DTs. He might lose a Mutalisk or two in the interim. Nope. And he does decide to back out with those Mutalisks. Fifth base now going up for Jay Lelly has fully expanded to that third. And I apologize if you can hear the dog licking in the ear, uh, licking in the mic. He's a uh, he's doing something over here. More cannons going down now for Scora, and actually this is almost uh, I would call them too late cannons. You know, it's the the latter defense. You know, you see the meters fly in so what do you do you build cannons and actually we do see three broodlords in production so at this point everything is strictly in Jay Lely's favor he's done a fantastic job of harassing that mineral line of Scora Scora on the other hand has done a fantastic job of keeping up with pro production for that loss uh, with the exception of the first few minutes of the game where he actually just kind of forgot about his natural uh, other than that, everything has been doing really well, and yes, that's what we're exactly seeing, ladies and gentlemen. Zealot Archon coming out now for score. We do see a changeling from Jay Lelly coming through. Going to see that army walking, and there's the reaction. I would say this is almost the time where uh, Scora has to push, though. A uh, couple of... One good storm goes off in there, but he did, did uh, miss on two of them. We do actually see that base going to get cleaned up. But here we have a bunch of infestors as well as the broodlords doing their damage. Going to start to pick things away. But actually, this is turning out to be a pretty potent force. Force field. Going to kill one. Going to kill two. Going to kill three. And oh my god, he killed the broodlords. So actually, ladies and gentlemen, this game actually just took a huge turn. This has been a very strange game all the way around. And we're seeing it right now. As we do see the army from Scora, which is primarily Zealots and Archons, is... Oh, dog wants down. Whoa, buddy. There we go. Sorry about that. The dog wanted down and tried to take my headset with him. So with that, actually, if we do look back here at this composition, we do have a bunch of zealots, a couple of stalkers, and some archons in this mix, as well as some more stalkers coming in. I think he realizes that threat is now gone. Now he can go ahead and start to punish Jay Lelly for uh, maybe some missed, uh, missed fungals, missed things like that. We do see more broodlords in production, though we have five of them on the way now. And we have level two air attacks and level three carapace on the way. First broodlord does pop the army of Scora continuing just to kind of chill out in the middle we do see Jay Lelly up here in his main not quite mind out he's got 15 see a small section of Ling's going to come up here and try and uh, force the cancel on this Nexus we do see extended thermal lance now finally coming out and actually we do see Scora kind of trying to self right right now and he's actually succeeding uh, uh, quite a bit Jay Lily having to mine long distance mine off of this fifth base and let the mass exodus of broodlords begin and my dog tipped over a fan Fantastic. Something to fix in the middle of the game, I guess. Or in the middle of the break. Do you see both armies just going to kind of sit here and feel each other out yet again? We do see, if we go look at the units tab, we have six broodlords out on the field right now, two infestors, and a corruptor. So right now, not that equipped to deal with Colossi, which is actually kind of an interesting transition for Scora to actually go back into Colossi. Like I said, though, he is finally moving back into that stage of the game where he's starting to even out just a little bit. And the run by with the Stalkers, he's going to be able to pick off 
Is he going to get the hatchery? He's going to get the hatchery. So he will get the third hatchery. Forcing the rebuild on that. Probably going to sacrifice. Oh, no, he doesn't sacrifice that many stalkers. Loses maybe two or three. And we do see the army of Scora just back here at his base. But he does manage to get the cancel. So this game actually going back and forth. It's on the seesaw right now. I would say it's probably in Scora's favor. Supply right now is still fairly even across the map. And we do see the army starting to move down. He's going to pick off one Infester. Picks off a drone. Is he going to get the... This has to be very frustrating for Jay Lully at this point. Having this base denied three or four times. This actually reminds me a lot of the game on Antigua. Where basically it was... I'm going to let you take three bases and then never let you take another one. That's basically what's been going on here is actually once Scora fought his way back out of the trenches, he's been able to uh, basically do that to his opponent. Say, you know what, you're going to take X amount of bases, that's fine, you can have them. But I'm not going to let you take any more. And we do see the Broodlords coming over here now to try and flank on this base. We do see a cannon over there though. And let the positioning battle begin in this case. We do have a small subset of roaches over here. And oh, it looks like Scora is going to go ahead and just make that final push in, feeling confident enough in his composition. And the army from JLLE caught out of position, so he's going to have to pull everything back, picking off a few of those stalkers right at the end. He's got that Colossi pretty exposed right now. He needs to make sure that doesn't get picked off. Moving it to the other side, very, very good positioning. And we do see the fungal go down on those stalkers. Oh, no. And actually, these hit-and-run tactics by Scora actually really have to be making J. Lily angry. Because there's only so much he can produce at a time right now. And he's running very, very low on Larva due to the fact that his hatcheries keep getting sniped. Three Infestors are on the way as opposed to a bunch of Stalkers inbound. I don't know where they morphed in at. Right there. So right now, actually, Scora way ahead in the supply lead. Like I said, I think this game has shifted back into Scora's favor after his first initial couple pushes. Although Jay Lelly, I I have seen, I have seen you come back from some craziness. So we do see a small engagement there, and a GG comes out from Jay Lelly. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, game number five is in the books. We have to wait and see what the next map is for game number six. Welcome back to game number six between Jay Lelly and Scora. Go check out the other five games. They have been amazing. My voice is very, very hoarse at the moment. I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep water and everything uh, going in so that it doesn't have that issue. But this is game number six between Scora and Jay Lelly and is going to take place on Core Hall Compound. A two-player map where you can only spawn cross if that makes any sense and I'm sorry it's been it's been a long day spawning down here in the bottom left hand side we have our blue Protoss player winning a very convincing game number five we have Scora and up here in the top right hand corner we have his opponent who is one loss away from elimination we have our orange Zerg buddy Jay Lelly so like I said uh, right now this is game number six Scora one game away from victory. Jay Lelly one game away from defeat. It's been a hell of a series so far. And I can honestly say that. I've loved casting this. Thank you to the MSU Hive Mind for hosting this tournament. And also thank you to NVIDIA, who is going to sponsor our Fall LAN, which is going to take place September 8th. So thank you, thank you to them. And thank you to Montana State University as well for allowing us to hold such events. So we do see the probe now for Scora going to continue to do the harassment that he's becoming known for throughout this tournament. We do see the first pylon down now for him as well. And interestingly enough, Jay Lelly, what are you going to do? You're behind a little bit on that one, Jay Lelly. Opting instead not to... Uh, going pool first now what do you what's uh, my question would be is what's your plan after this um, if you're Jay Lelly right now what is your intent are you going to cheese this game and hope that it works or are you going to um, are you gonna play this some standard style that you've been known for this entire time now he's gonna go ahead and block the natural 
So at this point, actually, I think J. Lily having some issues up here in his natural. The Overlord dancing above him. And the pylon does go down. So Skora successfully has harassed this entire time. Uh, I would like to see Jay Lely go ahead and just pop out a couple of sets of lings to go ahead and take care of this. And there are four lings in production right now. But Jay Lely going to go ahead and take his third first. So last time we saw this happen was actually on Antigua, and it didn't work out so well for Jay Lely. We're going to have to see if it fares a little bit better this time. The first four lings now out for Jay Lely. This pylon is going to get taken down. And Skora going again for the Nexus before Gateway. So Forge, Nexus, Gateway, still no cannon, feeling very, very safe, and the natural for Jay Lily does go down. Again, this has been an amazing series so far. If you haven't gone and checked out this, the rest of this series, or even for that matter, the rest of this tournament, go do it. There have been some fantastic games played all the way around. And with no cannon, uh-oh, these lings, no. J. Lily, you need to come over here, J. Lily. J. Lily. Although, with that much DPS, I'm actually quite positive. Oh, and there's a gap there. He didn't completely fill it in. He is going to go ahead and pick that off. These three lings. Oh, getting hold position by a probe. And actually just going to continue to run by. Going to go up here and be pretty annoying. Going to go ahead and scout to make sure there's no hidden tech. But we do see the third for J. Lely now up. The natural is just about done. And the first zealot is out right now to make sure that that gets denied. Although he didn't micro and that zealot died. The cybernetics core is now out for Scora. And the Suzergo is just going to continue to pick away and be annoying up here in that assimilator. Or on the other hand, going for all four gas geysers yet again, so maybe some two base all in play. We're going to have to see what kind of transpires here on that one. Uh, if he goes for game one, two base all in, that would be amazing. I enjoyed watching that play, but we're going to have to see. Second Zealot now out and a sentry to follow. Warpgate research has begun. These lings are just up in this base being annoying, and as I believe Blood Cooker put it during. Uh, the game between Freaks and myself, they are the annoying party guests that you never wanted to invite in the first place. And actually, I believe it was on this very map. So, a little nostalgia trip, I guess you could say. Sling is going to get tickled to death before not running out. Going to take a couple of hits on that sentry, but are more... Yep, they're dead. Never mind. I was about to say something blatantly obvious, as if I haven't done that throughout the rest of this cast. J. Lily now on uh, on two guys. There's getting two more. So we're going to have to see how he decides to play this out. Uh, deciding to go ahead and saturate his natural first. Getting an evolution chamber down. We're going to have to see if he does go... Oh, he does go for another one. And a roach warren. So everything thus far pretty standard... Uh, in terms of how Jay Lily is playing, we actually do see one, two, three, four, four gates, three gates, three gates out of Scora right now and a robotics facility. So FFE into three gate, Robo, I like it, and a Twilight Council and another gateway going down. So in total, four warp gates, a Robo and Twilight Council going down now so we can continue that upgrade advantage that he enjoys so much. Got the Overlord Dance train going over to the top of the map, as well as the... Oh, I don't know where I was going with that, I'm sorry. <laughs> we do Interesting, we have Hallucination on the way now for Scora. I personally like Hallucination play a lot, um, especially against Zerg if you go 3-gate expand as opposed to FFE. And go hallucinate and get some some extra units, quote unquote, out. 
uh, and make your opponent freak out a little bit. We do see speed also on the way, and Laird just about none now for Jay Lelly as well. Laird just now finished. Two more overlords to add to that dance party coming out. We do see level one melee attacks on the way as well as level one carapace. Hallucination is now done. We do have one immortal out, one uh, more prism on the way, and a couple more units getting warped in. So actually we do see Scora with a smattering of gateways. I think he's up to five now, unless I'm missing something. Nope, he's up at five. These Ling's going to come out here and pick off the one Stalker that was out here to try and uh, try and scout. We do see a wall starting of Spine Crawlers. I like this play a lot. It actually is a very nice lead-in to uh, some of the later game stages for Zerg, as we've seen other times where you go for Broodlords and such. It actually it makes it really hard for your opponent to break. Uh, spine crawlers are actually kind of crazy. Static defense in StarCraft II as a whole is kind of crazy. So it's interesting to see that he is starting that up right now. And that line of spine crawlers is about to finish. And the Overlord waves to the warp prism. Are we going to see something? Come on. Sora. Jay Lily does see it. And the Overseer did get shot at a couple times by the cannon. He does, in fact, see this warp prism over here, so I'm going to be interested to see how long it actually takes him to come over here and get it. We do see five zealots warped in now. That's going to be kind of an issue, because the spine crawlers are started just a little bit too late. Queen's not going to offer much defense, but we do see the lings coming in now, and the small push coming up. Oh, that was a gross misread by Jay Lelly. Although the force field there was not the greatest they could have been. But these mutas are going to pick off everything. And while Jay Lelly did manage to clean this up, uh, it was kind of a bad read on the side of Jay Lelly in terms of moving those spine collars. Probably could have left them where they were. We do see this army from Scora is going to get cleaned up, but there is some uh, some damage going on in the main that is going to get cleaned up by these as well, these Mutalisks. That is a hero drone. Did you see that? That is a craziness. Hero drone. The third for Scora now going down. Uh, the Overseer in the base getting taken out. I, I would like to see level 2 upgrades started, but... At this point, Scora probably knows the situation better than I do, sitting here trying to cast it. And we do see a lot of Mutalisks and a lot of Lings incoming. That is... One less than 16, that would be 15, right? That would be 15 Mutals inbound, as well as a smattering of Lings. Sees that there's a lot of Stalkers there, and decides actually to let the Lings run in first. These Lings are going to tank a little bit of the damage. These Muta is going to come in, though, and cause some serious issues for the Blink Stalkers. But as they blink back, they're able to pick off a couple of the Mutas. Has to reposition that just right. We do see more Stalkers coming in now. The Ling is getting completely cleaned up. Blinking behind. He is actually able to get a couple more Warp Ins. Blink is on cooldown, but he's not able to finish that up. We do see the Lings and the Muta is going to continue to rip down this fourth as he continues to just stream the units across the map. Ten more Muta is just now popping out now for Jay Lelly. So this is actually a huge loss for Scora. This is another moment where Scora needed to expand. He absolutely could not. We do see a couple of Archons being morphed there in the front. Oh, but are they going to get taken down by the Lings? It looks like they are. One does come down, does die instantly. The other one, about the same, just dies instantly. We do see the cannon... And the Ling run by. The cannon's going to go down. The force field goes down. But it's a little bit too late. And at this point, oh my god. The massacre that's happening in the front of Scorer's base is uh, amazing. Right now, supply 134 to 43. And the mass warping of units to try and deal with this. By Scora. Right now, 100 supply difference between these two players. And the units just continue to stream down. So right now, 
J. Lally looking like he is going to take this into a game number seven between these two players. Ladies and gentlemen, what we have witnessed here today is absolutely amazing. What more can you say about it besides absolutely amazing? And the natural getting taken out now. The cybernetic score is going down. These units are just funneling down. You continue to see the mass uh, mass rally of units across the map from Jay Lelly. 144 to 36, the supply right now. That Archon is going to go down as well as the Stalkers and the Cannon. And the GG comes out from Scora. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to game number seven. I am... I am shaking with excitement right now. I don't know about you, but I am looking forward to seeing how this turns out. I would like to welcome you back to the final game of this best of seven series between J. Lelly and Scora. And this is for the title of the Platinum and Gold Hive Mind StarCraft II Champion for the Summer Edition. If you haven't watched these games, I would say go do it. Go do it. They are amazing. And one thing to note, we did have a little bit of a glitch under the new Blizzard UI, so we were forced to go to a veto system, which brings us back to the map that started it all. It brings us to ML or GSL's Metropolis. And this time we see spawning down here on the bottom left-hand side our Blue Protoss player who lost his last game and brings it to this final game seven. We have Scora. And up here in the top right-hand side, his opponent who won pretty handily last game, our Orange Zerg player, Jay Lelly. And with that, like I said, we had to take this to a veto system with Scora having the last veto due to some glitches with the Blizzard UI um, and some glitches with the map that would have been in this position and that would have been Atlantis Spaceship. So with that, we actually do see both of these players playing it out on the first map that they played on today. And we do see Scora Dropping down the pylon as he has all game long. Jay Lelly continuing to drone up as he has all series long as well. Again, it's been a very incredible series. I am overly impressed with both of these players. So definitely keep them on your radar when you see the probe coming around here. It does look like the Overlord missed it though. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, you cannot spawn down here if you spawned here. You can't spawn close by ground, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. So, Scora making sure that his opponent has spawned exactly where he did last time as well. Or it is Scora that has changed spawn location. We do see the drone again making sure that Scora... Oh wait, no, they did they did spawn cross. Yeah, I think I said that. Never mind. Either way, Scora, uh, Jay Lelly making sure Scora didn't spawn where he did last time. Scora, on the other hand, going to go ahead is he going to... It looks like he's going to Nexus first yet again. So we're actually seeing what looks like the exact same build coming out of Scora as did in game number one. It'll be interesting to see if it plays out the same way, if Jay Lilly learned anything from this entire series as a whole. Not saying that he didn't by any means, but I'm just saying I'm, I hope that uh, it plays out just a little bit differently than the first game. Spawning pool now done for Jay Lilly as we're seeing. Uh, the Forge just now go down for Scora, so Jay lily has got to see this and think something's up. He sees the exact same build as he did last time, meaning that he can probably expect more of the same. It'll be interesting to see um, how he decides to respond to it. Now, we do see the expansion for Jay Lily did not get blocked this time, though. Scora, as amazing as he's been at denying that expansion... Oh! Scora! Is he... Scora with some cheesiness. Walling that off. He can build a cannon here now. But there's no way to actually stop this from happening. Scora. Even though he did deny this expansion. And the cannon does go down. Oh my god. This is horrible news for Jay Lelly. As there's not that much he can do about it. As you can see the drones are hitting everywhere they can. J. Lilly with the cancel on that uh, hatchery, and he is going to go ahead and take his third out of this. So while the natural did get canceled, and this probe is actually stuck here, there's not a whole lot he can do about it outside of cannon this one down. This is still going to be a pain in the side of J. Lilly. 
And it does look like he's going to go ahead and just cannon, cannon the Overlord down. So now we do see a spine crawler going down now for Jay Lily in response to the cannon. And what this means is basically he's going to deny vision up here and force uh, Scora to actually abandon this. Now, mind you, this is a lot of minerals lost by Scora for something that didn't actually pan out. So Scora, by all definitions right now, is behind, even though he does have the Nexus up, and he did deny that expansion and make Jay Lely come over to his third to start mining. That's still a lot of loss for Scora in terms of overall minerals and things produced. And as you can see, that spine crawler does have vision on it. And it does go down. So actually, J. Lily very nicely handling that contain. While the natural did get a little bit delayed, it didn't set him back too terribly much. And actually, we do see Scora now getting level 1 upgrades. And supply right now is dead even for both players, actually. And this pylon is going to get taken down. Like I said, very, very nice handling of this situation by J. Lily. And we have a Roach Warren coming in out now. So actually changing up his style ever so slightly to try and adapt to the maneuvers of his opponent. We do see a nice drone transfer coming down on here to the third. And the wall off from that gateway. Providing, I believe that's, yep, just a, an area big enough for the Zealot over here. And these links continuing just to... Uh, pick away at that pylon. Right now, Warp Gate research is just now started, so that's something that he doesn't really have to worry about, because that's, yet again, another... Ooh, I'm not sure if that was intentional or not, but we do have a second Roach Warren coming down now for Jay Lely. Scora throwing down another gateway as we speak, continuing to transfer drones down here to that third. The natural is just about done. I almost want to say that was a mistake, unless he's going to go for some sort of quick roach tunnel build, in which case you could get both of those at the same time as they are the same time requirement, but that does require a lair, which he doesn't have at this point. So right now he's just sitting on roaches, uh, link speed just now done. And going back down here to Scora's base, we actually do see a Twilight Council, and oh, it does look like that was a mistake. And the sad faces are had all around. It's okay, Jay Lily. We have faith in your ability. We have faith. The evolution chamber now going down now for Jay Lily. And the second guys are coming out. So he's going to continue to drone up behind this. It'll be interesting to see if he actually does uh, decide to go for some sort of uh, burrow build out of this, considering he messed up slightly. And he is getting double evolution chambers now and starting... No, it doesn't quite have the gas, but they're not yet. I'm trying to, trying to put stuff into his head, but he does have level 1 melee attacks on the way. And Lair is just about finished now for Jay Lily as well. Two overlords in production. Now we do see Psystorm and Blink. A very, very potent combination, especially in a case where you wasted that uh, money at the very beginning of the game. But we do see uh, just a metric ton of stuff coming out of both of these players at this point. We do see Aspire up on the way as well. I would bet there's going to be an infestation pit somewhere. Uh, unless Jay Lely is just going to straight up go Muta. We do see a macro hatch going down now. So he's going to be on four hatcheries, and that's a, actually a lot of larva if he keeps up with injects. You're looking at seven-ish larva every time that pops out. So seven times four, obviously, is a lot. I don't get paid to do math, people. I'm sorry. I'm not going to give you an exact number. You can punch it in your calculator if you have to. We do still see only gas being mined out of the main of Jay Lily now, though. So interesting choice on that front. He almost certainly is going for some sort of, I would say, Ling and Fester play, as he has been shown to do in the past. But it'll be interesting to see how he actually decides to pull it off. Now, we do see that no infestation pit has gone down yet. He is just now on Spire, and actually that Spire is just about finished, just a couple of seconds away here. Continuing to just pump Lings at this point, which I think is a very smart idea. Now, he might be also reverting back to 
uh, play from the last game. Now you do see he has a lot of gas stocked up, so he might just be reverting back to a lot of mutalisks uh, that won him the game last time. And actually, oh, if we do look, there's a lot of units moving out now for Scora coming across the map. He does have four High Templar in this mix, so actually this is pretty potent. Uh, gonna go around and check and make sure there's no hidden pylons. He's also getting stuff out of vision. So Scora does know that there's a bunch of Lings out here now. And there's 10 Mutalisks on the way. So it actually does look like Jay Lely is gonna fall back on prior experience or previous experience, however you'd like to say that. And just go for Mutas. And we do see more Warp Prism play going to come out of our blue Protoss player, as well as an expansion coming down now. Running these links down this side of the map, it'll be interesting to see if he decides to go ahead and try and run these in here. More High Templars getting uh, morphed in right now. Oh, he needs to be careful with those Mutas. Oh, don't engage that. No! Jay Lely, Jay Lely. And the Lings, are we going to get a run? Oh, we do get a Ling run by down here into the natural. These cannons are yet to finish. But he does see them. And he does opt to go for them first. And there's actually no room to warp in here. He actually has to pull that entire army back to make sure that this base does not fall. And these Lings are doing the damage they need to do. And even any, any sort of delay on that... Uh, that natural was good, and it actually ended up delaying that push quite a bit. And we do see the mutas coming in now from behind. It, oh, and this is so unprotected right now. This is so not cool for uh, Scora at this point. We do see a bunch of mutalisks coming in, realizing that that is the way to go to exploit that Protoss immobility. We have four. Oh, he needs to be careful, though. The High Templar are there. And he does manage to take out a couple more of those, but the High Templar do not storm on top of that huge flock of Mutalisks. More uh, Lings coming out now for Jay Lely. We also do have level 2 melee attacks and 22 Zerglings coming out now. So at this point, Scora's economy has been damaged. If we look at the Workers' Loss tab, 17 Workers killed on that Harass. That is a very, very good trade uh, for Jay Lely. At this point, we do see the army continuing to come up again. Oh uh, no, Lings. And the Lings just running by the uh, conga line. And still no cannons coming up, so Jay Lely gonna have free reign on this main base. And the natural, oh my god, the multi pronged attack from Jay Lely. Scora caught completely out of position, caught with his pants down, if you must say that. This Nexus is more than likely gonna go down. The Mutalisks are going to just do their number on this. Uh, main base of Jay Lely. And actually, oh, a couple of good storms driving those mutas away, driving a few of them down into the orange there. All in all, a very good trade. Oh, and he does not decide to pick off those sentries. Those are free sentries for just about anybody who wants them. And we do see the Lings back here to deny that. And the mutas are also going to come back here and deny that warp prism. Level 1 air attacks now on the way for Jay Lely and an infestation pit going down. Scora rebuilding the natural, or the uh, third nexus, excuse me and has not actually tacked down many more gateways. He has two in his main and three at the front, maybe four, uh, as well as the three in the natural, four in the natural. So he's only working off of seven gateways at this point, which is still not that many. We do see Jay Lely getting up his fourth base very, very smart at this point. He is also slowly but surely working his way into his Broodlord play. You haven't seen any roaches yet, but taking out two gateways. We do see one storm go down, making a whiff, scaring him away just a little bit. Picking off another pile on these mutalisks are so annoying. As you can see, for Protoss players, the immobility of that army is coming back to bite him in the butt. We do see a bunch of mutalisks still outside the base. Uh, although, Scora has not moved that army much farther away from there. We do see supply now 163 to 83 in favor of Jay Lely. Jay Lely with a very, very dominating performance at this point. I think we can all agree upon that. And the Ling's gonna come over here. Oh no, and the Ling's do come over here to pick off these Archons. They do finish just in time, but it's not enough. Those Archons get taken down right away. And the rest of the army, he does storm right on top of it. He's gonna be forced to storm right on top of his own army right now, but those are getting picked off slowly but surely. The Mutalisks coming in the back, 
This multi-pronged attack from Jay Lily is just vicious. I don't know how much longer Scora can keep this up. We do see the Warp Prism up here in Warp-In mode, so he is able to Warp-In units up there. These Mutas are just going to continue to run around and harass everything. But he needs to be careful he doesn't get stormed. He knows Storm is out by now, and this army is just going to follow. And Jay Lely just... Oh my god, and we do see a second flock of Mutalisks out now. This is reaching the point of insanity in terms of Mutas. Uh, you need about 35 to be considered basically unstoppable. And actually, if we look at the units tab right now, 42 Mutalisks out on the board for Jay Lely. This is the Mutalisk Death Ball that I referred to a couple of times throughout this series. It'll be very, very hard to stop unless Jay Lely throws away Mutalisks like he just did there. But that is a lot of Mutalisks out on the board. This fourth base for Jay Lely is going to fall, but at this point, I honestly don't think it's going to matter. You know, he just did force a couple of storms out there, and he actually did get a couple of good storms off, but it did nothing to thin out the numbers of Mutalisks out on the board. We have 38 out and no more in production right now. We do have 34 Lings in production, though. So at this point, Jay Lely just really needs to push. I mean, even if you get into some situation where you kill off the army and it ends up in a base race, um, you're still looking pretty good. And we do see more Lings just continuing to flood out now. A Greater Spire on the way for Jay Lely, so it is going to be some sort of Broodlord play here towards the end. We do see four Lings down here to make sure that that army stays where it is, but that is a lot of Mutalisks flocking up. We do also see Adrenal Glands and level three Zergling attacks coming in now. And, oh no, that's horrible. Scora not able to produce out of these two Warp Gates as they are unpowered right now. More unpowered... Uh, more unpowered things in this base. <laughs> and we do see the army moving out now, realizing that, oh, and he's going to actually blink into it. We do see a bunch of links as a deterrent in here. The Mutalisk army going to try and catch this so far out of position. The Mutalisk is rushing back now to try and save this base. There's a bunch of links coming in now to try and take out those stalkers. I don't know that this is going to be enough. He has to make sure he can dodge those storms. The Mutalisk ball is almost now back. And we do see just a, oh, and he storms on top of the sentries, killing one of the sentries. Another one gets taken out, using up all of those storms. And ladies and gentlemen, it is 154 to 62 supply right now. And the Mutalisk flock of Jay Lely is absolutely unstoppable. We do see a few more units warped in here on the side. Jay Lely going to just ignore them. 100 supply difference between them now. And look at this, just more cannons, more, I would call them desperation cannons. It's at a point where you just realize that you should have started them earlier and you don't have them up when you need them, but this army is just going to push in here. The sky is full of mutas this day, and we do see Jay Lely in just very dominating fashion right now going to come in here and just walk through the base of his opponent. There's not a whole lot he can do about it either. Scora, right now, with very little units out on the board, he has a few stalkers, an Archon, some, some very, very simple units out. Everything going to go down now. It is not looking good for Scora at all. Ladies and gentlemen, this might be the death toll for Scora in this series. And what an amazing series it has been. See the last pylon going down, another warp gate unpowered. And let the base race begin. We do see a few zealots and archons up in the corner. And Jay Lily coming back actually to try and uh, take this out. I don't necessarily blame him. But at the same time, he has such a huge supply lead, and I don't, I don't quite know if he realizes it or not. But there's expansions everywhere for Jay Lely, and for this to get forced into a base race would not... Oh, and a good storm falls right up on top of those Mutalisks, and the Archon going to go ahead and do some of the damage that it needs to do. These Zealots getting picked off one by one, the Mutalisks just falling everything around. The Zealots charging into the line of death that I was referring to earlier. And ladies and gentlemen, I, I honestly do think we're seeing it now. I think we're seeing the... Oh, and we do have Broodlords incoming, so they are going to start the slow siege of the main base of Scora. Ladies and gentlemen, as I keep saying and trying to keep saying, I think we're seeing the death note here for Scora in this game. Pulling probes away from there, but he is down to less than one mining base at this point. I, there's not a whole lot he can do. This multi-pronged attack from Jay Lely, so, so potent. We've seen it before amazing games so far and this one continued to keep that trend and we do see the flock of mutalisks 
coming into the main base now of Scora. A couple of cannons. What are cannons? <laughs> cannons. As I said, that flock of needle is so very, very potent. Scora not wanting to GG out of this game quite yet. He still has a little bit left to give. We're going to see if he can pull it around. And the Metalists have infiltrated the natural expansion of Scora. One storm goes down and a miss. And these Broodlords just continuing to poke away. Jay Lily at this one is just vicious. He is out for blood in this game. An assimilator falls. Will the natural nexus fall? Probes now trying to long distance mine. There's not a whole lot that can be done. We do see infested Terran getting thrown down in the third. Gonna take down everything. Cybercourt. One storm does go down. It does kill a bunch of those infested Terran. But we do see the Mutalisk flock and everything else coming in now. There is not a whole lot that can be done here, ladies and gentlemen. Expect a GG at any point. Now, this is just too much for Scora to handle at this point. Even with clutch storms and everything else, he has no economy. He has very few mining units left. If that, I think he maybe has, he has that many probes left to mine. And let the slow siege continue from Jay Lely. This is what he's become known for in these tournaments. It happened before, and it's happening again. He got outwitted in the last tournament by Blood Cooker. But Jay Lely showing us strong, strong Zerg play. And ladies and gentlemen, expect a GG at any point now. There's not a whole lot that can be done. Score holding out for the very, very last moment. But the units just keep flooding across the map from Jay Lely. Jay Lely now on four bases, and the GG comes out. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have crowned a champion for the Platinum and Gold Tournament for the Hive Mind StarCraft II League. So we would like to thank our sponsor, primarily MSU, for allowing us to do this, the MSU Hive Mind for hosting the event, and we would also like to thank NVIDIA for our upcoming LAN for their sponsorship. We appreciate everything we can get. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you so much for sticking with us through this entire series, through the entire tournament. Be sure to check out Evolution Gaming on Facebook. Uh, be sure to check out the MSU Hive Mind on Facebook. And check out the web pages associated with those two uh, groups as well. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is Evolution Gaming's Woodhouse signing off to you. Congratulations one more time to Jay Lely for being the tournament champion of the Platinum and Gold Division.